So in that last episode, I got the engine installed and finally running, but I didn't really do anything else with it afterward. So in today's episode, I finally do some tuning with it and take it out in the street. This fire somewhere. Either that or it's just cylinder three. Cylinder three is misfiring. And cylinder six. Probably the plug wires. The plug wires I put in here are just trash. Mm, you can smell that paint just burning. All right, so this is cylinder six back here, and it has one of the older plug wires on it from another car. And there's a good chance that it's it's dead. Oh, you know what? I didn't tighten the ICM. That is why this thing is just loose back here. I'll have to go ahead and do that. That's probably all it is. Well, the misfires have kind of cleaned themselves up already. I don't know what happened. I think it maybe just needs to adjust the fuel trims. But right now, she's uh, you know, she's running pretty good. This car has always had sort of a little bit of a mist going on, and I'd always suspected the vacuum leak in the HVAC system. And that's probably 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 what's really going on here. But you know, otherwise though, it's running really good. I put some coolant in here too. Uh, we're gonna let some of the stuff burn off here. I also sprayed down my throttle body just to make sure there isn't any sort of vacuum leak going on there either. And uh, I used brake parts cleaner, it didn't rev up or anything like that, so we're good on vacuum there. And uh, yeah, she's running pretty good actually, so it's a little bit quieter. The belt doesn't rattle, the alternator doesn't squeak anymore. I'm happy so far. This is awesome, this is great. The L67 lives on. All right guys, I'm gonna be working on the tune today. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use a program called Tiny Tuner. This is what this looks like here. It's pretty basic, but it's really powerful. I need to edit the mass airflow table. And so what I'm gonna do is pull up the old tune and just pull up this mass airflow table. Now this is the mass airflow table. This gives you an idea of how much air is flowing, grams per second, I guess, per, uh, for each of these different uh, frequencies. What I need to do here is change this to the values for the new mass airflow sensor. And this is coming from a newer car, so I'll go ahead and do his reference a newer bin here. Here's the other mass airflow table here. This is for a 99 car. And I'm just gonna put them, go ahead and put them side by side. And um, what I can see here is the difference between the two of them. So they were close enough that I was able to run the car with it. But I need to go ahead and um, update this use new values here because this one is a little bit different up top or about five percent different up top so that's a lot that's enough to to sling your fuel trims quite a bit and that's the biggest thing i'm worried about here is just making sure those are correct now one of the things i'm going to do here though 
while I'm looking at this is just kind of get an idea of how different my current mass airflow table is compared to where it would have been from the factory. So from the factory, this thing would have been reading a little bit lower, and I know I changed some of the things, uh, a change in frequency there, because the fuel trips were just too far out. So I'm going to go ahead and reference the uh, initial mass airflow table from a Camaro. So that's what this would have had here initially. So you can see mine is quite a bit higher than this would have been. So I'm thinking I might need to give this one also a 10 or 12% hit here too. And then as I do some driving around, I can tweak this and see where I'm at and see how close I need to change this to. So I'll go ahead and copy the old table here and I'll just paste it and grab the whole table. And I'll do add to selected, I need to do about 10%. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and push this to the bit, the computer. Now the, the software I'm using here to actually write this to the PCM is called Digital Horsepower. It is outdated as hell, but you know it works great for what it is. It's unlocked too, so you don't need to use credits for it, which is amazing. But otherwise, though, the UI is kind of finicky, but it works well enough for what I need to do. And uh, one of the things I'll need to do here is clear the fuel trims, and then I can just do a partial right with this. This will just take a few minutes to do that. So I'll go ahead and plug in my, my interface here. This is a digital horsepower interface, so I'll go ahead and plug this into the OB2 port. And there is an 82 Grand Prix with an OB2 port. Alright, and I'll go ahead and plug this into the laptop. And now I need to turn the car on and put it in run. So I don't want to turn the engine on, I just want to get the car and run, that way the PCM is communicating. When you're tuning with digital horsepower, you need to keep the battery level perfect. It can't have a low battery level at all. And actually, I need to close the door for this. That way the interior lights don't affect the, the voltage. If you get too low of a voltage when riding to the PCM, you could have a lot of issues with this thing. And you could break your PCM. Alright, so I've got my file there. and We'll go ahead and write to it and see if we have enough voltage. Yep, we do. We've got 11.9 volts there. And it's going to go ahead and write to it. So this is what that looks like. And then I can kind of figure out how long it's going to take by how fast it moves up there. This will take about 90 seconds, it looks like. Cool. Programming complete. I'll go ahead and shut the computer off for about 15 seconds. And then I can unplug this guy. What I'm going to do now is take the car for a drive and figure out if we're close enough to where we, are need, where we need to be for the mass airflow trims there. So I'm going to keep an eye on my long-term fuel trims to see if they're positive or negative. And if I see something that's too far positive or too far negative, I'll just need to stop the car and go ahead and adjust it in the tune and make sure that um, we're getting close to where we need to be. So I'm going to go ahead and log the whole tune here. I'm using a program called UV Scan. So here I have UV Scan, and uh, it'll be able to pull out anything I want to. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the car and run one more time here. And then I can go ahead and try and connect to it. All right, it's connected. I'm going to go ahead and go to the scanner. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get the laptop in the car here, and we should be good to go ahead and uh, see if I broke it. Fire up. All right, works all right. Field trims are still, it's not, refer it's not referencing the, uh, the field trims yet. It's still an open loop. Once it goes to a closed loop, we'll see some numbers there. Oil pressure looks good. Temperatures look good too. Oh, she's peppy now with that new saw body. It made a pretty big difference. All right, fuel trims are you getting a little bit better. As long as I hover around there, that's okay. I'll log it and I'll adjust the tune for that. Alright, we'll give her a go here. I'm not gonna do it too much. We'll get some RPM here. I dropped the sweater. Well, I dropped my sweater off the car. I had to go fetch it in the middle of this traffic here, but thankfully there's not a lot of people out here right now with all this COVID stuff going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the scans going here again. Things still look good here. Temperatures look fine. Nothing new to report. You know, I'd rather see the fuel trims negative than positive though. Right now they are very negative which means they're taking away fuel. That means because there's too much fuel in there for it. It's so peppy now, it's so much more.
more responsive. Our Sardian boost. Fuel ratio is safe. I'm not really getting into the boost so too much. It's kind of lazy actually. I know it's gonna like the rev though, so I guess, I guess we'll see. I'm sure I lost a lot of low and torque here. I'm gonna give it a quick first gear. It sounds a lot different. Like him timing. Kind of interesting. I'm gonna need to raise the, the rev limiter and the shift points. I might hit valve flow, but we'll see. Yeah, the power band has definitely shifted a little bit in this thing. I'll take it on the freeway and see how she does. No, it pulls hard at 4,000. Yeah, the torque range has definitely shifted around a little bit. It's about eight, it's about eight degree difference for me sitting in the car, and I can definitely feel a change in cam timing. And that would be about 400 RPM change or so, something like that. So definitely a, a significant change in cam timing there. This motor just does not have the low end boost that the L67 would have had. You know, you really gotta get into it for you to start feeling the boost here. I'm gonna slow up a little bit and see how she does. I'm not even watching the wideband or the, or the boost gauge right now. I'm running a little bit lower boost right now. Actually, maybe I cut. Maybe I changed it. Maybe I changed that. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I'm gonna give it the beans here. Full throttle. It's just not. It's so lazy. Oh, there we go. It is running very much actually. All right. Time to head back. I'm definitely gonna have to look at the log after this though to kind of see where things are at. Because it is running more rich at wide open throttle than it should be. So I probably gave it too much in the, the, uh, in the mass airflow table. Man, hearing that alternator not squeak anymore though has made my day. That was driving me insane. He's surging a little bit. Something's not happy. Now the fuel trims are positive. What the hell? I'm not sure if that's the paint I smell. I think it's the paint. The paint just does not smell very good. I think I'm low on fuel though. But it's good to have the car running again and, uh, and to have a lot of those little issues sorted out with it. The throttle is definitely more responsive though, it's so much snappier. It is running less boost too, I'm only at 15 pounds right now. I must have adjusted the uh, the, the boost controller a little bit. We'll fill it up here. $1.24. Alright, we're ready to go here again. I flashed a new bin file for it for the mass airflow change there, so this should run a little bit better now. And I'm going to go ahead and scan this, and we should be ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and fire her up. Oop. It's just not happy.
I don't think I got a single log from that at all. Everything looks okay though. Oh, that would do it. Always the stupid things. That explains why the field trims are so positive now. It was it was adding fuel to make up for a vacuum leak. So you know you could actually tune out a vacuum leak if you wanted to. You would just change your your, your field trims to make up for it. Thankfully, it was just a small thing, but this could have been like a real big debacle, though. All right, so I've spent some time working on my shift points here, and uh, hopefully I have a pretty good uh, starting point here for adjustment from there. And I've cleaned up a few more things in the tune to help make this thing run just a little bit better. I fixed my vacuum leak now, and I should be able to do some pretty good pulls here with this. Or at least see how she does and get some better logs this time. Or get some actual logs, that would be great. So I'm going to go ahead and upload my new tune here. So I'll just flash a new one. I'm going to go ahead and write, write the tune here. I drive a Honda. This tunnel has the best echoes. She was flipping pretty bad there. The, the log will tell me exactly what happened, but it shifted a little bit earlier than I thought it would. But I'll also keep an eye on that log. I think I just need to tweak the field, the uh, the shift points just a little bit more. But it's a little bit more rep happy now. trims look good. I should probably be washing my mask, my wideband, shouldn't I? All right, let me get back on here. Here. something funky going on in uh, second gear. Otherwise, though, it doesn't pull too bad. This car is so sketchy. It's such a handful. Alright, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to keep working on the car a little bit here, do some more tuning with it. I need to fix some of these shift points still too, and then I'm going to work on uh, adding a different fuel pump in here, and then I'll be able to, be able to turn the boost up quite a bit more. So stay posted, I'm going to keep posting more things about this car.